Hello. Hi, everyone. Okay. So I think you can hear me and you can see me. That's great. Let's start right in. It's not going to be long like last, last time. Uh, quick update, quick Q&A session. Um, just so you know, I was uh, 30 minutes ago, I was in a, in a forum, an online forum about AR and VR displays. So you can check that online as well. Um, but there are a few things to unwrap here. Um, I, have, um, I have a few things to share with you. But first, thank you so much because we passed 700K dollars on the Kickstarter and more than a thousand backers and headsets pre-ordered. That's, that's really something that's huge. Thank you really much for the trust and for the attention you brought to the project. It worked really well. It showed that despite all the announcements that we've seen in October from um, Facebook that is no Meta or Pimax or HTC or all the other ones, um, the, the, the Lynx community is, is strong uh, and people understand the, the project we have here. So thank you very much for that. It says a lot and uh, I can't wait to meet you and I'm going to tell you a bit more that uh, in a few moments. Um, so the campaign is almost over. Um, and I mean, it's, I think we only have six days to play with now. Um, so you know that the price of the headsets, just a quick reminder, will go up after the end of the campaign and the base model is going to be $599. Um, so this is after the Kickstarter um, and it will be um, so 20% um, up priced. Uh, before the end of 2021, it will be only 10% up priced, but after January 1st, 2022, it will be that final price. So tell your friends if they want to get their hands on links at a very good discount, it's right now. Uh, so that's now that we have that out of the way. Um, I can share with you the next event. So next week, and I'm going to show you a bit a teaser of that next week, you, we will have a, a video of Nati VR, the, the YouTuber. He's one of the most ancient VR YouTubers out there. He, he's been in the, in the game for quite a long time. He's seen everything. Um, he, he made videos about that. It's well documented, right? Uh, and he tried links last Saturday uh, with me uh, and his brother. We were uh, at the office here and he had, um, I think he had a great time trying the headset. Uh, he will, of course, um, tell you more in a video, but uh, we discussed together and I'm going to show you for the first time um, something on SteamVR with controllers. So um, he was able to use controllers with the Lynx R1, something that people have been asking um, us to, to show more. And uh, it was hard. I thought it won't work but uh, with, with Nati, we were able to show that. So if you follow the campaign, we had Cass and Chari, who made a very nice intro about the company because the stage of the, of the software was still, you know, um, nascent. And uh, then we had MRTV and Sebastian from MRTV the, the week after was able to, oh, there is a technical problem. Wait. Can you see me? I see people that are not seeing me. Okay. Okay, so let's um, refresh maybe. Okay, can someone in the chat tell me? Okay, I can see, okay. Okay, so let's keep moving. Okay, Chucky is with me. He, he's checking the, the connection is okay. So if everyone is back, I was just saying, I don't know where it cut for you. So I'll just repeat again, but 
we had Cass and Chari, then Amar TV, and then last week we have Nati. And these three content creators show you different aspects of links. Um, Cass and Chari told you about the company or project, like a very good overview with the first experiences. And then we had um, uh, we had Amar TV two weeks ago, uh, Sebastian did a through the lens shot because he was very excited. That was really great. It was a great day. Gary was here as well. He's from his, his podcast. And now last Saturday, we had Nati, Nati from Nati VR channel on YouTube. Um, and he had a great time. He was able to uh, have some exclusive, uh, especially on Steam VR. So he played all the mixed reality demo, but also the, the VR content as well. Um, and we discussed together and I'm going to show you like, 40 seconds of what he's going, like without sound, 40 seconds of what he's going to show you in his video. But I think Nate, like AMR TV was a great video in the sense that it showed links as a very good AR, uh, like augmented reality headset that, that could, that, that can compete with the HoloLens, that can compete with the Magic Leap and is doing a great job at, um, having new experiences in mixed reality. And Nati sh will show you all that. And also that Lynx R1 is a very good VR device and that you can use all your existing Steam VR games with Lynx. So he was able to play Beat Saber. He was able to play Alex. He was ab able to play in the, in the Steam Lab. That was great. I was kind of amazed that we are at this stage right now. So uh, I'm going to show you right now like 40 seconds of, of that footage uh, without sound anything. And it, it, you will get more next week during the Nati, Nati, when Nati will release the video, but uh, it will be after the campaign ends. So um, let's dive right in. Okay, so you can see my screen. This is... Um, this is Nati using the controllers. Um, yeah, I think it's really great. So for that short demo, we will just show you that he was able to complete uh, songs in Beat Saber with the the prototype controller that we are using. So the game view. Is Is it better now? Can you can you see me? It's weird. Is it better? Yeah, okay. Um so yeah, sorry, let's continue. Um I might re upload that, but um Okay, it's laggy, but uh, you can go on our YouTube channel right now and you will see that. Um... So if you want to see the HD video of that, uh, you can go on um, on YouTube. Um, sorry. So is it is it back on right now? Okay. So you can go on the on on Link's YouTube channel or like on the channel in a, in a new tab or um, after that video and you can see the footage of uh, Nati playing Beat Saber. So it has high refresh rate, six DOF, six DOF controllers, everything you expect from a standard VR experience, from a you know a PC VR experience. So there was a, a computer streaming uh, directly to the headset, the feed of uh, Half-Life Alyx or Beat Saber or the experiences we, we went through together. So it was it was really great. It's great to finally be able to demo that. Um, I, I think you had, a, you had a great time. But you have to remember that Lynx is a very versatile device and it goes from you know doing PC VR experience with your Steam library, all the way to taking the headset outside 
and uh, meeting your friends in a park and playing a game like a Pokemon Go like game in, in full AR. So that was great to, to show. Um, so I see that there are already some questions in the chat. The record was laggy. Is it the game or is it because of the record itself? So the record is not laggy at all. You can you can check the video. I think it's my computer. I could not uh, decode and encode all those HD videos and stream at the same time. I think it's on my my bad. Um, will the SDK be open source? Yes. Uh, a lot of a lot of things will be open source, including all launcher and like most of our ecosystem. Because and and I, I want to open up here with the news we had in the recent days and some questions that arise in the community where we see Facebook or Meta investing tens of mil billions a, a year and people are asking, how are you going to compete with that? And um, there are several ways where we have strong a strong advantage. Uh, first, we're not, we're not them. Uh, we don't have their our game but uh, it's, it's also a good thing um, and also most of our ecosystem will be open so we don't have as many employees as they have obviously but first we have very good partners we have access to the same technologies that they have um, we are and we'll tap also into the the open source uh, effort as well so a part of us open sourcing our work is that also we want to leverage uh, the community community here to build something that is not coming from uh, Meta, and uh, I think there is a there is a very good opportunity here. You know, uh, if there is something called the Metaverse out there, it's not going to be owned by a single company. Um, I don't think it would. I don't want it to be like World Gardens. Um, only like you have to use the Apple headset or the Facebook headset to use that kind of experience and uh, we'll build from that idea and uh, that will work. Will there be an app store? So about that, yeah, that's a great question. Yesterday I had a very interesting talk with uh, people at uh, SideQuest actually. So there is no announcement to make yet. I just can tell you and can confirm you that we are working to make something happen, um, it's a bit early to make any kind of announcement. We're we're we'll be meeting with them before the end of the year, um, but there are a lot of ways we are I think going to work together. Um, and um, yeah, links and side quests can be can be very exciting. Uh, so you know, as an ecosystem, so I really want to make something happen here. They also want to do that, but. There are things in the way, like you know, these business discussions that we have to to figure, and also on the technical side of things, like the backend infrastructure and all that for uh, the app store, based on the operating system that we have. There's a lot of work here. It's really exciting. It's the beginning of an ecosystem that you're you're seeing being birthed in front of you. It's it's really great, and um, that's definitely on the on the roadmap. Uh, we want to make something happen with them. Um, Okay, so Shuki, Shuki made me a display here that you don't see with all your questions. Are you afraid of Facebook Meta new headset with color pass-through? Uh, no, actually I'm not. And um, so basically next year, Facebook is going to put a Lynx headset, <laughs> their Lynx headset. So, um, you know, you have to share this Pi and we'll share that Pi with other people. And this pie will be will get bigger because these these companies are investing a lot. Uh, they are educating um, the masses, uh, and this is not something that at our stage right now we we can do. So, you know, it's 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 great because it's validating the market. It's validating our technical approach. So it's a great indicator that we've been doing the right thing since the beginning. I think. Um, so no, I'm not really afraid. Um, and you know, even even the people that don't want to be locked in the Apple ecosystem or a Facebook ecosystem, that mass of people is is a market for us. Like for the the kind of company that we are, it's big enough just just that mode to 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 be a market. And I think there are there are more market we can address than than them, especially on the enterprise side. 
So I'm not really worried. Um, actually, I'm kind of happy because they, they kind of proved that uh, we were right. Uh, because at the beginning of the year, uh, Mark Zuckerberg gave a, an interview to, to Matthew Olson, who is the, uh, a journalist at the, the information uh, newspaper. And he, he said, you, you can find a transcript online. I think it was in March. He said that he does not believe that uh, people want to see the reality through pass through VR, and they changed their mind a few months after that. So, um, you know, they they kind of agree uh, that uh, optical see through when you you want to do augmented reality is not really there yet for the consumer. I think everyone knows that when you look at Hollands or Magic Leap, what you know what happened. Uh, on the commercial side of things for this company. So it's great. I think it's it's great um, that, that they're doing that. Um, I haven't seen the headsets, um, but I, from the renders, from the things we're seeing, there are already things that are poking me, like uh, there is, we don't see the cameras at the front and there is like a, like a glass thing, and that can have an impact on the exposure time of the camera and things like that. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see. It's exciting. Um, but uh, yeah, to answer your question, we're definitely okay to share the pie with companies that big. So what's the okay? So what's the next event where we can test the device directly? So yeah, sorry, we uh, I passed on the slide far too fast, but uh, we are going to be at uh, AWE uh, next, sorry, there you can see, you, think, you can take notes, but for the last day of the Kickstarter campaign, uh, I will be on the plane with a few devices for San Francisco and San Jose. And uh, it is the, for the AWE conference, it's the Augmented World Expo conference, it's, one of the biggest, if not the biggest event for AR and VR technologies to be showcased. So I, I'll be there, uh, I will do demos. I want to meet some of you uh, that are in the US. If you can be there, that, that would be great. Uh, so that's our first event outside of Paris, outside, outside of just having YouTubers at the office. So next week, native VR video, video hands-on plus AWE for us physically. And then in January, uh, We'll have a huge presence at uh, CES because you will find Lynx devices on the Qualcomm booth, on the Ultralib booth, and on Lynx booth. So we want to, to you know, to spread uh, in, in our partner's booth as well. So you can experience the device there as well. And at the end of January, I think on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th, we'll be in San Francisco again for uh, SPIE, AR, VR, MR, which is a very interesting and very high quality conference about uh, hardware in AR and VR. Um, yeah, so um, that's the that, that's the the roadmap for the marketing activities we are going to have. Um, I also want to travel to Japan to meet the community there, but there is a lot on, on our plate right now. We want to to be laser focused on uh, getting the device in your hands. Uh, and, and to the consumer now, so, um, you know, uh, we, we don't want to spread too much and to, to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to, to lose our, fo our focus. So next question, what is the resolution and refresh rate when streaming wireless from a PC? And how is the battery life when streaming? That one is a great question. So the refresh rate is 90, 90 frames per second. The, the display is only working at that re um, refresh rate right now. So the, 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 the PC is streaming the image at 90 um, and the battery life is amazing. Why is that? Because when you're using, uh, when you're doing PC VR, you, you are doing a lot less stuff uh, on the rendering on the GPU of the XR2 because the, the PC is working a lot, a, a lot more than, than the headset, of course. So uh, the, the battery life is, uh, is uh, I think it would be, like three hours, something like that, a bit more than three hours for, for that use case. So yeah, it's great. Um, will it eventually support Azure Spatial Anchors or Google Cloud Anchors? So that can be persistent experiences in one space from for multiple users. 
Uh, it depends on the platform, but uh, there are some cloud offerings that are walled gardens. So, for example, maybe Azure will ask you to use a HoloLens, so it won't be possible to use the links. But uh, we'll try to be compatible with most of the ecosystem. But the, the blocks that we want to be compatible with, with need to be also compatible with, with us. You know, it's, uh, it's both ways here. So, you know, we are trying to play a uh, fair, fair play here, but uh, there are some uh, ecosystem where it's it's not so open. For example, uh, I think one example is the the hands in the quest. So the hand tracking is not yet running on OpenXR, and so it might be difficult to be compatible with links for some developers that ha will have to redo some stuff. So. Um, I don't know, but uh, our philosophy is to, to try to be compatible with uh, a, a lot of blocks out there. Will it be possible to use links as a HUD for drone flying? Uh, you'll have to try, I don't know. I can give you an answer now. Can we have open source decentralized metaverses? This is exactly what we're trying to do. So I think, you know, um, in, in his presentation, Mark Zuckerberg, took some time to tell you that he wanted to have a, an avatar of you that, that can be, you know, the same across apps in his metaverse. Like you can take your appearance and your name and your identity to many places in the metaverse. And I think this is, this is not great. This is not great for, for us. Uh, I mean, for us, you know, the humankind. Because I want the metaverse to be uh, like internet before 2003, where you know you had this, you had many identities. Like you had your online identity and you had your physical identity, and um, and 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 people could really have multiple identities within themselves, uh, themselves, and that is really interesting. And that is a part of the metaverse I want to see as well, and not lock the users into having like one avatar, one appearance across all the apps, like Facebook is doing, and they want to do that because they want to, to lock an identity to you uh, in real life and in the metaverse. Uh, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll do we'll do something different here. So yeah, yeah, like a persistent profile that follows you from site to site, from not that cheap. Yeah, exactly. Just to confirm which pledge should people in UK choose, we pay the IT here, so is it the non-U? Um, I don't know, Shuki. We, we don't know. Well, we'll, we'll get you an answer by, by tomorrow for, the, for people in the UK. But uh, it's, it's your fault, it's on you, you know. You, could you just not stay in the U and play with others? Will there be an app store? So yeah, that was what I was talking about regarding SideQuest. We really want to work with them. Something will happen for sure. We just have to find the, the right architecture and the right way to, to do things. But uh, there is, a, there is a, a very good will from both parties based on our discussions. Uh, they're under NDA, so I cannot go into details, but there, there is a very good will uh, for them and for us to, to work together. So. Um, maybe, maybe we'll announce something at CES. And will the Kickstarter backers receive their headsets sooner than those that place their orders in March? Absolutely. Uh, is April release date still on track? Yes. Uh, and if you, the, the sooner you order, the, you know, the, the sooner you will get your headsets. There is a list, there are numbers, you know, we, the first backers will be in the first batch. And uh, yeah, so um, we'll try to deliver everyone as soon as we can, but. Uh, which AR cloud service do you expect consumer will use with this product? I don't need persistent geo anchors for my current project, but I will need them in the near future. So we, we, um, in 2022, we will also work on our services. Uh, so we'll have a, there will be a links service for that, for uh, geo anchors and, you know, uh, having the point cloud store and shared between users that that's something we're that's definitely on, on the roadmap for 2022 uh, 
Um, and in the meantime, maybe we'll be compatible with, with someone else that can do that. Um, is there... Will the controllers be open source, like how they connect and how they are tracked, so other controllers type could be built and connected by the community? So I don't know, you know, because we're working on Finch on this, so I cannot, I cannot speak for Finch, but uh, we'll definitely help people that want to build like controllers, like accessories to, to make them work. Will there be a 2D Android application shell so we can install standard apps? Yes, we are working on that. It's super hard, but uh, in the previous live, I said that we are not sure how to do that. And someone messaged me and find me how to do that because he worked on these features for other headsets. I won't say which one, but uh, thank you if you're watching. Um, and uh, yeah, we, it's on our roadmap and we know how to do that now. And uh, yeah, we will have support for 2D apps. Okay, are you guys still priori prioritizing Unity support as number one? Or will OpenXR be prioritized? So OpenXR will be prioritized among other things. Um, and um, I, think, I think the combination uh, where we'll put most of our attention would be OpenXR, then Unity, like op Unity running on OpenXR runtime. Um, and, and then um, we, we will um, also open source the, the layers for um, Unreal and Godot implementation. So you might see some other 3D engines there uh, compatible with links. Uh, how strong of a computer will we need to sync the links for a game? So that's uh, still under review, uh, but uh, it will be compatible with NVIDIA GPUs as well as AMD GPUs. Um, and I, I, I don't know where is the bar yet. Uh, it will also depend on your uh, Wi-Fi connection, but you'll also be able to use the, the cable to, to transfer. But we'll have the GPU specs um, should the links essentially be plug and play for Linux as it's just being streamed from the PC? Yes, that's that's the plan. And, uh, you know, it will also depend on the OpenXR runtime. Uh, we are discussing with um, with um, some people at uh, Valve of that. Would it be possible to upgrade the LCD later on? Uh, I don't think so. Like you could replace it if it's broken. Uh, we don't have a plan for for an upgrade here because um, I don't see I don't see a better display for that specific size and that specific lens we are using. So that that's not on the on the menu. How soon do you think you might be able to get to shipping? So the target is April. We're working to get. Uh, a lot of units sooner than that, so we can distribute them to some developers and some backers. Uh, but the target is still April. Um, is there any other thing? Is it Linux company? Oh, Kickstarter question. I am in France. Can I have an invoice with a 4 VAT when I get a device from Kickstarter to deduce it? Yes. Will, will the price increase? Yes, after the Kickstarter campaign, it will increase 10%. And then after January uh, 1st, 2022, it will increase again 10%. So hurry up for uh, you, some of you that didn't really order yet. How easy is it to, how easy is it to repair the headsets in case something breaks or goes bad? Will there be schematics available? So schematics, no, but um, 3D, the 3D model uh, of some parts, yes. Um, yeah, th that's about it. How about Bluetooth peripheral supports, things like keyboards, gamepads, Xbox One as a controllers and speakers? 
Yeah, so we have uh, Bluetooth 5 on board of the headset. Uh, we are pairing controllers with Bluetooth today. That might change, but we are all... A any accessory using Bluetooth should be compatible with links, uh, especially keyboards uh, and the uh, Xbox controllers. Will the OS be open source so we can help out and improve it? So we'll, we'll try to open source as much as we can. So if people want to help, they will be able to contribute. When do you plan to launch a new website? Next week. So keep, uh, keep an eye out for that one. Can Lynx cameras perform night vision? Uh, no, not the one mounted here. And how good would the cable connection be? And would it compress and resize a ton? And would the refresh rate be lower? Uh, so the cable you will have delivered with the headset should allow you to stream at the, the full resolution and frame rate of the, of the headset. But it's a standard USB-C cable. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take the questions from here as well. Um, okay, so... What, what do, you, what do you do with the two hundred person funded on the Kickstarter? Do you plan new things? So all the money in the Kickstarter is going for production. There is no any other use of that money. So we're we, we're paying for the manufacturing with the money from the Kickstarter, and we are also raising uh, money on the side as well. This is also why I'm going to the U.S next week and that we are having a lot of uh, events at the office to, to meet people that who would like to invest in, in links as well um, so yeah expect some news before the end of the year about that will we be able to buy the case in the future if we don't reach the stretch goal yeah that, that is that is under consideration you plan to sell on amazon i, I don't know yet What's the big check in the background? That, that check here, uh, it's um, when I was uh, much younger, um, it's the first prize I got from a, an optical challenge uh, from the SPIE association. So there was like a challenge where you were a student or uh, you know, starting your career and you, you exposed new architectures or new designs for um, AR and VR uh, optics and I got a, I got a prize from that competition it was in Strasbourg in France and uh, this is where I met um, some of my friends uh, in the hardware community as well so I, I, I advise some of you to go to that conference it's uh, uh, either in Strasbourg or in San Francisco every year and it's from the SPIE it's a really great conference if you want to know more about hardware and if you want to see things that are going to be in production in two or three years from now. Um, sorry. Can the USB port on top be used for peripherals, like additional cameras? Yes, uh, absolutely. Were the stress test done with the hinge connecting the visor and strap of the, this headset? Yes. So this is the, this is the final strap. Uh, this is the final hinge. Uh, it's an aluminum hinge. Um, you know, you can um, you can play with it. It's it's quite resistant. Uh, if you break that part, trust me, you have broken something else before that. It's a very resistant part. After the Air One, is there any plans for a more VR focused headset with wider field of view? I cannot disclose anything about uh, our works on the, the next versions. Um, we are focusing right now on Lynx version one, on its production and on its way to, to, to market and to, to our users, to you basically. So we don't want to lose any focus. Uh, if we get more investment before the end of the year, um, we will accelerate on the technology evaluation and uh, prototyping for next versions, but uh, yeah, right now all the efforts are on version one. And there are a lot of things on the software that we need to do, all, you know, to build up all the SDK and the basic experience you get uh, from the headset. 
Do you plan an OLED version? Uh, we are looking at OLED panels, but uh, the version one is the LCD. Um, is there an official area for backers to discuss all things about links? So there is a, an official Discord server that you can you can find, I think, on the Kickstarter comments and uh, on, on Reddit as well. Uh, I, I am in this Discord, so thank you for the guy that set up that, that server, so thank you. But uh, on our next website, we'll have a, a forum where with your accounts, you, you will be able to discuss with other Lynx users, yes. Will the inside face with the lenses have a cover for the inside components or is it final design? So yeah, we're 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 missing a, a piece here. Uh, there will so it will have a, a, a textile like a fabric uh, to to hide the inside of the, the headset, of course. Uh, how do we find the Discord? Let me put the the link uh, right now in the chat. Okay, so it's uh, not it's not maintained by uh, any links. Um, employee but uh uh i know that mark and me are on this um on this um thing i'm putting the link now in the chat um is the links water resistance um uh, no uh, don't don't put it near water please um Will the links have exclusive games in the App Store? That's entirely up to the developers now. We are in contact with, with some of them. Um, I, I don't know yet. No decisions has been taken, but we are discussing with some game developers. Um, okay. Thanks for answering the questions and taking the time to discuss with us. That's... That's normal behavior, I think. Um, again, we are a human-sized company, uh, and for the time being, I think it's great if we if we can uh, discuss with our community. So, what's the current state of the hundred developer units? Are they all taken? They are not all taken, but they are not produced yet. So, this is something that is ongoing. Um, so, I think we'll get them in January. Um, so you can reach out to us if you want an early unit, but the priority is for some developers um, that also back to the, the Kickstarter. Um, that's not an invite. So I think, I, I don't know how cool you can log on the Discord, but yeah, there is a server links on the subreddit as well. So you can also check on our, on our subreddit. There is a, a link for the, the Discord. Um, yeah. So I think that's that's good for for tonight. Uh, Forty minutes session. That's that's good. Uh, unrelated. Do you know from which country do the pre-orders come from? They will they will come from uh, Taiwan. Uh, most of them, and some of them from uh, France, depending on how we'll ship. Um, is it possible to read text on links? So what do you define text like what what's the size i, I don't know but uh, uh you can you can see some of the demos that we've put uh, yeah you can you can read text maybe you cannot you cannot read eight point text two meters away but uh it, it, it it's good so it's 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 not even a question i can answer easily but uh it has a, a decent resolution and a, a much better resolution on the pass through than what's on the quest 2. Who in your team is responsible for the screw choice? So um, he's not here, but uh, we had a discussion about uh, what happened on the in the Kickstarter comments. So there, there was a there were questions about the the screws uh, on the headsets that was um, was um, weird. Uh, you can check check it out. I am a glass user. Will I will I I have problems about scratching the links lens? No, you will not scratch them. Any or you won't scratch your glasses either. Any plans for post-launch updates to the device? 
uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we'll continue to keep you updated um, by email and on, on our uh, website as well. We'll update. We are updating the website right now. It will be online uh, next week sometimes. What will the audio for links be? So the audio again, guys. The speakers are on the side, so you have audio speakers here, and you have an audio jack as well, and you you also have Bluetooth if you want to have wireless audio. So you have all the audio solutions you can uh, you can uh, have in the world. Yeah, it's a three point five millimeter jack for the jackport. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think that's good for tonight. Um, I'll see you at the next session. I will try to do session next monday uh which is one day before the end of the kickstarter and uh be because after that i will be on the plane uh, to uh, san francisco uh with the devices so uh yeah it's going to be exciting thank you again so much um i know there are still some questions in the chat let me get them quickly does the strap interfere with conventional over the here headphones i don't think so Will AR work in DCS world? So what is that? Will you provide the 3D CADs for the screws? <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, I hope we you had some answers again to some of your questions. Uh, we'll keep you updated on the Kickstarter. I hope you will keep an eye out for the native VR, for the native video. It's uh, really exciting. Uh, it's going to show you stuff on links that we haven't shown to everyone yet. And uh, again, um, help us on this Kickstarter uh, to make it even bigger, spread the word uh, to, and, and, and yeah, it's something that is also exciting uh, for those of you that are still here. Uh, I will be filming a video on the um, uh, Adam Savage uh, Tested.com um, channel on uh, November 10th. Uh, so this is after the Kickstarter, but it will it will be uh, a very good exposure as well for the project. So keep an eye out for that, um, and uh, I will see you later. Okay, bye.